This tutorial will cover how to projection map a round cake in Resolum. I'll be starting with a quick illustration of why cake mapping a round based cake is more of a challenge compared to mapping a square based cake. I'll then walk through the projection mapping process, including how to use Bezier warping to curve our projections. We'll also cover edge blending and talk about selecting the best kind of video content for this task. If you're new to the channel, I make projection mapping tutorials and projects, so please consider subscribing if you haven't already and like this video if you enjoy it. If you're brand new to cake mapping in Resolum, I have an introductory series of tutorials which might help you get familiar with Resolum for projection mapping before embarking on this tutorial. These are dummy cakes which are just polystyrene cylinders. They are fine for practicing on and mapping a real cake or iced dummies would follow exactly the same process as what I'm about to set out. Each of the tiers are 5 inches high and moving from the top to the bottom their diameters measure 8 inches, 10 inches, 12 inches, 14 inches and 16 inches. These are the dimensions I recommend. I will make the guide I will use and a cake mapping animation freely available via a link in the description if you are using the same size cake as me and want to follow along. I will also list all my materials and kit, including the projector models, at the link in the description. I'm first going to give a quick demonstration of how light falls on a curved surface so we better understand the phenomenon we are trying to overcome with our projection mapping in Resolum. If I project a checkerboard and hold a flat piece of card in front of the projector, we can see that the squares keep their shape. This is fairly close to what would be considered the optimum projection surface, flat and at 90 degrees, in other words perpendicular, to the projector's beam. But if I take the card away, look how the squares appear when they fall on the curved surface of the cake. The squares don't look too bad at the front, where the cake tier is roughly square on to the projector, but as we move out from the centre, the cake surface is at more and more of an extreme oblique angle in relation to the projector. The effect this has on the appearance of our projected content, in this case our squares, is for it to appear stretched, and then eventually the projection falls off because the light can't reach around the back of the cylinder. Compare the appearance of projection on the curved surface of a round cake to projecting the checkerboard on square-based cake tiers that have flat planar sides. Even though we still need to correct for perspective, we are not fighting against the warping created by the curved surface of the round tiers. The process of mapping square-based tiers is a lot more straightforward, which is why I tend to recommend square-based cakes. Click the card to see a playlist of tutorials which will show you how to map a square-based cake. Another advantage of the square-based cake is that you can't see the back surfaces so easily unless you go right around the back of the cake. In contrast, we can easily see the point at which the projection falls off the edge of the surface of the round cake, especially when using one projector. Therefore, I highly recommend using at least two projectors as I will be doing. The projectors should be positioned either side of the cake at roughly 45 degree angles to the central viewing position. Both my projectors are connected with mini display port to HDMI cables. These cables run out from my two Thunderbolt 2 display outputs which support mini display ports on my MacBook Pro and go into the HDMI connections in the back of my projectors. I'll start a new composition and then go to Composition, Settings and make my composition 1080 by 1080 pixels. Then I'm going to drag in a guide which should also be 1080 by 1080. As I said before, there is a link in the description where you can download this guide and a free cake mapping animation that you can use to follow along. I trigger my guide and I go to Output, Advanced. I see screen 1 with a virtual output and I want to change that to display 2 which is one of my two full HD projectors. I'll call that left. And then I'll add a new screen and call this one right and I'll assign it display 3. I'll turn it off for now while I deal with the left hand side first. So the first slice 1 I will rename left 1 
and then I'll make sure I'm in the Input Selection tab. I can zoom in and out of the view by using the scroll wheel of a mouse, two finger scrolling up and down on the trackpad, or using the shortcuts Command plus and minus on a Mac, Control plus or minus on Windows. You can pan around inside the view by holding the spacebar and clicking and dragging inside the window. I will pull the corner points around the top left tier. So that's left one, and now I can duplicate that slice by right-clicking on it and selecting Duplicate, and this new surface becomes left two. I pull that down onto the next tier. Again, duplicate this slice. You can use Command-D on a Mac or Control-D on Windows to do that more quickly. Repeat this process for all the slices on the left. Here the snapping feature is pulling the edge of my slice to the boundary of my composition, so I'll turn off snapping represented with this magnet icon. Moving on to the right hand side, I can duplicate left one and then pull it down into my right screen. I will rename it right one and delete the default slice that gets created with the screen. Right one is currently sitting on top of left one, so I'll move it over to the right hand side. I'll go through the same process again to make all my slices down the right hand side. So I have all my slices set up. Now I go to the Output Transformation tab. I want to select all my slices. I can do that by selecting the top one and holding Shift and then selecting the bottom one which also selects all the slices in between. I can drag on the corner and, holding down Shift to keep their proportions, scale them down a bit to get them into the right ballpark size-wise. I can see on my cake that that's about the height of a tier. It's more efficient to scale all our slices at once rather than individually. It can really help to do this next set of steps one slice at a time, so turn off the visibility of all but left one. I'm currently in transform mode, so that means I can move the slice around and scale it and rotate it. If I want to edit these corner points and move them around, I need to be in Edit Points mode. I can select this mode up here, or I can switch back and forth between the two modes using the shortcut T on my keyboard. I'm going to move these points to what I roughly judge by eye to be the middle seam of my cake. To do the left hand points, you will likely need to physically move so that you get a better view around the left side of the cake. I'm being fairly rough for the sake of the tutorial, but I would be doing this a lot more carefully if it were a real event. What you're aiming for is to try and preserve the squares of the guide as much as possible. Because remember how the squares help you keep tabs on how much distortion is in the projection. So while you're moving all the points, you always need to have an eye on your physical cake and be monitoring how the squares are being squashed or stretched. I'm happy with the rough position of my corner points, but I can see that because of the shape of the cylinder, the light is being bent. It looks like it's arcing up slightly. So we're going to need to add further adjustments to our mapping. We do that here in warping where we change our point mode from linear to bezier. That gives us these extra handles that allow us to create a curve between the points. So we just pull these handles down until we're hugging the curved shape of the cake. Remember we are trying to keep the squares as even as possible, so also pull the handles left and right and notice how that has the effect of squashing and stretching the squares. You might have to accept that this process might never be perfect, so do your best to achieve a good looking result, most importantly down the front of the cake where most people will be looking. So in transform mode, I pull left two roughly into place. 
Then I go back into edit points mode and move the four corner points until I'm happy with the rough positioning at the front. When it comes to the points on the left, I don't want to go too far off the back of the cake and I certainly don't want to go so far off the edge of the tier that the projected content goes on the wall behind. And all the while I'm trying to preserve those squares. I'm happy enough with that, so I change to bezier mode and just pull down that cylindrical shape. Again, I'm being fairly rough with this just to give you an idea. It's a fiddly, inexact process. You may find that one adjustment goes too far and you have to go back and correct it. Do your best to eyeball it and you'll soon get a feel for the process. You can decide for yourself how important it is to iron out the distortion. If you achieve an even appearance in your squares, you can trust that video content you pipe into your projector will display with the same fidelity. For some types of content this is important, photos for example, you don't want people appearing with wonky features or limbs. Text and straight lines will also show up distortions present in your mapping. It follows that if you want to disguise distortion in your mapping, avoid this kind of content and choose imagery that doesn't feature crisp shapes, but perhaps soft swathes of colour or unpredictable patterns like particles, as we'll be using in a moment. Notice how much more adjustment the lower tiers require, because the angle they're making with the projector is a lot more extreme. It's a good idea at this point to save this as a preset so I can access it again quickly in the future. Save and close. Now I think I'm ready to trigger my content. As I mentioned before, this is an example of very forgiving content for many reasons. One, there aren't shapes that draw attention to distortion. The particles can afford to be a bit distorted here and there, and no one would be any wiser. There is also no content in the middle to reveal a seam, which is another disadvantage to projecting with round cake tiers. We can actually do a little trick to expose issues down the central seam. If we just stop our content and in sources, start typing solid colour. We can then drag that onto a clip slot and trigger it. It's red at the moment, but I'll make it white. Okay, so I'm not happy at all with the seam down the middle of the cake. I haven't been able to do a good enough job of making the content match, so I'm going to do some edge blending. We do this with a feature called Soft Edge inside Resolume. What Soft Edge does is it detects which slices are overlapping, and then it softens the edges of those shared regions, so that when we overlap the projections, they blend seamlessly into one another. Let's do this on the top tier. So in our input selection, I'll highlight left one, and then I will pull it over until it incorporates one column of squares from the right hand side. And then I'll select right one slice and adjust it so that it incorporates one column of squares from the left hand side. And then for both slices, right one and left one, I will enable soft edge here on the right. Now we can see if we zoom in how Resolume has softened the edge that it has detected contains overlapping content. So now in my Output Transformation tab, pull those corner points on the softened edge over onto the right hand side so that there is one square's width of overlap. And then I do the same thing for right one. I take these left hand points on the softened edge and I pull them one square over onto the left hand side. And now we can see that seam is far more gentle and one side seamlessly blends into the other. I'll save and close and let's just see it with some content. There is perhaps a little bit more adjustment needed, but that looks a hundred times better than the four tiers below where I'm not using edge blending. 
So now I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other four tiers by triggering our guide again and heading back into advanced output settings. The Particle Cascade is perfect video content for this task for reasons we've already discussed. There is plenty of other content that looks great too. Click the card to browse any of this video mapping content in my shop. All of it has been designed for using for cake mapping and projection mapping. With this mosaic, even though it gives an impressive effect, I'd be wary of that very uniform grid of tiles showing up where there are small deviations where the lines don't do what the eye is expecting them to do. So it could potentially draw attention to the distortion that I haven't been able to eliminate. What you should take away is that the best projection mapping intelligently employs content that sells the illusion and mitigates and ideally disguises small imperfections or compromises in the mapping. I hope this tutorial helped you. Please drop any questions or comments down below. I always try to respond to people if I can. Please do me a favor and like this video and share it if you think it could help someone. If you'd consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell, you won't miss out on my future cake mapping and projection mapping tutorials and videos.